with Mr. James Wofford and Mr. Derek DeGrazia, who will be taking you through the course here at Rolex today. And gentlemen, first off, coming out of the box, there'll be a lot of newbies here on course this year, as well as experienced riders. Mr. Wofford, what's it going to take for those riders who have never come out of that start box to kind of have smooth sailing in the beginning? Well, uh, there's not always going to be smooth sailing in the beginning. This is a four-star course. This is a lot of people's first four-star. And I think what they have to remember is that they're qualified to be here. They have jumped jumps like this. They just have not ever done it here at the horse park in front of such a big crowd. That's its own pressure, but their horses know how to jump. They'll be okay if they ride like that. Derek, as an experienced rider yourself, in addition to being the course designer here in Kentucky, kind of how do you handle that pressure as a rider coming out of the start box when things aren't so familiar? Well, <laughs> the, the problem is there is always a lot of pressure, and I think for a lot of riders, as Jim was saying, I think the big thing is just getting over the, the uh, hold, the, the hype, the spectators, and just being able to go out, do your job, and know that your horse can do what, what he has been trained to do. All right, well, these gentlemen will be taking us around the course, and we will show you highlights throughout. The double brush table here will be the first combination that riders will face on course. And, Derek, you can take a faster route here or kind of spend a little bit more time. Do you think we'll see riders go both ways? Oh, I think here they're just going to they're, they're gonna come down. They're going to fire out over the first one just keep going. I mean, this is just uh, really uh, to get the horses up in the air early in the course and uh, to prepare them for what's coming on. And continuing with the question of confidence, Mr. Wofford, here, how important is it to get things done successfully so you can build throughout that course? I, I don't know about successfully, but I, <laughs> I want the, my riders to be aggressive here. When you come around the corner and you see this for the first time, welcome to the big leagues <laughs> because these things are huge and they have to be ridden aggressively and that will give your horse confidence. And then you're going to be in the air over a four foot six by six foot six brush <laughs> and you're going to be thinking, whoa, this <laughs> This is what Rolex feels like and when you land if you put your leg on going to four you're you're going to be out on course and you're going to be okay now. And with 45 jumping efforts Derek these are numbered separately so reasonings for that or any relevance there? Well here I mean really there's quite a bit of distance between the two and they're pretty much on a straight line and so they they literally are, are there's no other way really to do it other than just to keep going straight. This area of the course last year causing a bit of trouble going the other direction as it was the coffin, this ditch behind us last year here at Rolex. And this year there's a new thing for riders to conquer. Jimmy, which way would you go? It would depend very much on my horse here. If I have a brave horse, I'm going to try the quick route, which is the, this narrow brush right behind me, straight down, avoiding the ditch, but hoping my horse isn't spooky because Derek is a sick and twisted individual. <laughs> he hasn't flagged the ditch this year, but it's part of the obstacle because horses, when they flinch, they typically flinch away from what, what they're spooking at, which is going to make you run past the next section. So if your horse is extremely brave and extremely straight-necked, I would go here. It's a four-star problem, yes, but that's not the problem. The problem is what's going on in the horse's mind in between the two elements. Derek, walk us through those options our riders will have at this complex. Well, um, coming coming off of number five, the stone tables, they come down, and it's quite a long straight approach to the the direct way here, and uh, which is a, a narrowish brush with a drop off on the backside, two strides to the brush out, and. Uh, as Jim says, you want to be straight. You want to make sure you have a hold of your horse so that you, if in case they do move off the ditch, that you still have them to, to jump out and you have to be very positive here. So there is an option uh, around the, the backside of the fence. It's another brush, another brush uh, which they can jump, which uh, is, has got a good approach and, and will allow them to be able to move on if they want to, if they want to take the option. Well, we don't often see elements that will play a crucial role being unflagged in combinations, but you will see that here at 6AB at Rolex. This water complex last year ended a few riders days, but coming into this over the rails, your first taste of water on the course, what do you need to do? 
well, you need to be aggressive here. You need to come back a little bit. You have to be back in your in your pace. You can't just come wide open in terms of your speed. I think that the thing to remember here is every time you jump, you have to be looking at the next jump because Derek's got a, a left-handed bend in here. You notice the last combination, the coffin, they're gonna duck out to the left. Here, they're gonna duck out to the right. So that that is one of the things that makes a four-star hard is the course designer will will check can you do this and if the answer is yes they'll say cool good boy good girl can you do this and sometimes the answer is no or no I can't do them that quickly together and I think that's what's going to go on here with the fish on an angle like he's talking about which side or is there a side that you would kind of recommend riders take I think the the lines here obviously the two different lines and uh, it really depends on how committed the riders want to be because the the left side they can definitely put more bend in it and take to the, take their time a little bit more the right side is definitely a bit more direct the the outs uh, the, you know there's only one way to ride the out but uh, at the same time I think we're gonna see you know three 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 moving strides coming out or else you'll, you'll see some jump over the fish and then and then so sort of take a breath and then and then get four little strides coming up out of the out of the water here so I think that uh, there is room for choice here I think uh, the jump going in I don't know one way or the other is not going to really save time so I think it's really a choice on what you want to do with your horse and you're not jumping into water here but obviously the terrain being a big factor absolutely absolutely and I think you have you're coming up the mound to the rails um, which is is going to be a, a different question for them as well as coming up and jumping over the rails with the with the drop off uh, on the back side going down into the water there's an option for the C element if you were to kind of swing a bit wide and, and mess up the turn there or have an issue at C initially do you think we'll see many riders take that from the get-go not from the get-go. I think that will be their emergency plan. If things go wrong here at the fish, then, then you'll see them pull up, work their way around, and just pop out over it and kind of check this one off their list of things to do. The coffin complex here certainly a factor in the past, and it will probably be again this year. There are several options here, but you'll want to come in with a game plan. You want to come in with a game plan. You want to come into here having jumped the first coffin at 6A and B well. If you didn't jump the first coffin well you would better go to some other plan here the direct route over this rail and down across the ditch is is four star already and then you have more to do there because you're going to have to make a serious decision which side of the wedge that you jump at uh, 10b Another reason here that it's so important to kind of know what your plan with Derek's courses and when you kind of walk into this combination or when I did anyways, you think to yourself, oh, the left side, it's right there. And then if you're smart enough to walk with someone like Mr. Wofford, he mentioned that maybe you should probably take a second look and think about that right side. Well, my thinking <laughs> is here that the, the ditch already is going to make horses wander their line a little bit. Even, even very experienced horses wander a little bit, wander I mean, they don't jump absolutely straight when they jump a ditch with water in it. Then Derek has very carefully placed the brush on the slightly more direct line that will make horses move off to the side more than some riders will realize here. And so for that reason, I think that I'm going to suggest to my riders straight down, straight ahead, straight up the hill, and then right leg on and right neck rein and back in and jump it at the red flag. Derek, unlike some combinations where you kind of have a plan and then you can navigate away from that necessarily if things go a different way and maybe choose the other side or a different route depending on how you come in, here do you think you'll want to stick to that game plan that you started out with and choose a side and stay committed? Well, I, th I think here uh, riders have to know their horses and they have to know jumping in uh, how their horses won jump coffins to begin with, but two, how they jump over ditches as well because I think... Uh, jumping out there are two different two different lines two different distances to the brush and I think depending on on that will depend on which side you actually end up going to and and riders uh, the, the good riders could actually change midstream depending on how they jump in and jump over the ditch a lot of different options riders can choose from here at the sunken road take us through those um, well first of all they're coming from the ditch brush which is back around the bend here and then uh, as they come around the bend they come to where we are which is uh, a bounce into the sunken road, two strides across, and then a bounce out over the brush. Uh, if they 
if they don't want to do that that route then they have the option of going around to the other side of the sunken road uh, jumping a one stride to the sunken road and then two strides across and then two strides out uh, which which again will take some time and uh, will but at the same time will give them another way around Time is such a factor on this course, and as we saw last year, even with Allison Springer, it can cost you the win here at Rolex. So when you're making decisions like this, obviously you'll want to keep in mind what your horse, your horse's strengths and weaknesses, but do you have time kind of weigh in on those decisions too at something like this? Well, uh, I am still of the mindset right now, if I have jumped clean up until this point with my horse, I'm going the fast way again because if I'm clean, I'm over a third of the way into the course now. Uh, he's running well. If I have jumped some of these things that are that are now in my history, I'm coming to this. But that that that's the easy part is to say yeah just keep coming <laughs> the hard part is look at what you've done now we the last thing that we took a shot of was a very 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 difficult fence then you gallop uphill you jump a hammock you jump a great big brush here behind us and then after galloping wide open for about 45 seconds you really have to compress you have a very sharp turn here this is more than a 90 degree turn and you're at a very high rate of speed coming in and you must be in a short controlled pace when you come out of that the the technical problem here you have to be very strong on a short stride to get in then you have to actually go a little weak because you want your horse to just sort of step down into the sunken road you don't want him to jump out into it take two short strides then you have to get very powerful again there is a lot going on here the rider is still going to have to be sharp mentally and the horse is still going to be ha sharp physically he can't be laying in the reins he still has to be flexible and responsive well, fences are certainly all related on every course, but particularly here in Kentucky, where at the coffin we saw this same type of rail coming in. So if your horse was a little uncertain of that, you're going to face it here just a few jumps later on in the course. After the coffin, having those two two fences just to have a gallop and sort of get into a rhythm, I think we'll let the riders settle down a bit after the first part of the course. And I think that from that, then... I think, as Jim says, the big thing here is really to get them back underneath themselves and get back on the stride that you need to, to have to come into this combination. I think once you do that, this could, for a lot of riders, just be a gymnastic exercise. We've seen some brush corners to this point, but not like the corners that will be faced behind us. And riders here will have to again make choices, this course about choices throughout the entire way around. Jimmy, walk us through kind of this complex here and, and which route you would choose. Well, again, I'm going to I'm gonna try and line up the fast route for, uh, first, which is to come down off the hill and then go straight ahead here. 15 is a big drop and you land on a down slope and then this turn is tighter than people realize and the ground falls away. And the, the reason I mention that is because that means the horses are heavy over their left shoulder. Well, look which way they're going to tend to duck out when they get there to the left. So the course designer here is using the terrain to make something more difficult than it walks. If you put that up in a show jumping arena, 90% of the people riding at this level would jump a clean the first time. When you put this here, this, this is a horse of a different color. This is a hard combination now. We're almost halfway around, so some of the horses are starting to lug a little bit. All right, and then for those newer riders, Derek, this combination, obviously they won't have seen anything like these down here before, but you had something similar last year. Yeah, the, the combination here is, is very similar to last year, and so I think for anybody that did see it, I mean, they realize it is, it is very possible, and uh, it actually rode quite well last year. But uh, it, is, it is really for, for them dealing with the terrain, making sure they get their line, and then being able to, to carry out that and making sure they have a plan as to if they're gonna if they're gonna go for the big scopey stride here and and do it in the four or, or if they're gonna stay out in five whatever whatever they do i think that they definitely have to have a plan coming in here you've made it all the way here to 17a and then you realize that derek has put this tough test before you and you're gonna want to make sure that you get it done here jimmy how are you gonna do that 
I'm, I'm still going the straight way. I'm out of options now. You know, the, a lot of these options, I think, are long. Not only are they longer, they're harder to do because you have to keep bending the horse back and forth. Uh, the obvious problem here is that when you land, you're at almost a 90-degree turn to the little uh, table down in the corner. The not-so-obvious problem is that your horse is going to land down a steep slope, and that's a dramatic change in their balance. You have to be able to land correctly here and keep your eye where you're going very definitely a combination that as your horse is jumping this element you already have to be pre-planning the next element we've had a, a pretty good gallop up the hill here from the corners which we did last and uh, uh, this this combination it's uh, or this this feature has been uh, on the course for quite a long time as far as the hollow however this year it is a new a new question here and uh, Obviously, you have to deal with the terrain uh, as well as as well as maintaining the line here because you have to get the line to the second fence to be able to jump out over the third, and and really uh, that's that's what it's all about. And you know there are no real real options here. Obviously, there are ways that you, after you jump the first fence, uh, whether you ride a little more direct or a little more of a bow, but in in reality, you have to get to the se second fence the correct way to, in order to get out over the third all about being scrappy at a four star and we will see a lot of scrappy riding here at the hollow. Here at the head of the lake, one of the most famous complexes at Rolex, but we need to talk for just one second about the crowds because here there will be a lot of crowds as there will be through all those galloping lanes. How does that come into play as a rider, Mr. Offren? I think it affects some horses. The, the more experienced horses and riders, they won't really notice, but the first time horses come around this corner in their career, they're going to hold back. Well, that's not a good frame of mind to jump into the head of the lake. The head of the lake is like the 18th at the Masters. It draws an enormous crowd and you can feel them as you come down to this. It's this, this uh, complex this year is similar to last year and last year it was very difficult and I, I think that that pretty much tells you what my attitude is going to be coming in here. I'm going to have to get them back. It's been quite a long gallop from the hollow, only one big table but now we have to be back in hand. You mustn't steeplechase this jump or you'll just vanish into the water there. You have to be back in hand, under control, back on your line again if you want to jump the head of the lake ride. Again, Derek, here there are options for riders who don't want to take the direct route and take us through what those will be for them. Well, I think uh, uh, coming, coming in, I think that you'll find that most people will jump in over the big log here. There's no reason not to unless you've really had, had a problem, but I, I really think that everybody's going to jump in over the big log. And then, then the, the direct way through here, I think that for a lot of riders, they'll realize that this comes pretty quick at you. And I think that you have to be on, on your toes and be ready uh, after you jump in over the log for, for the next part that comes up, which is going out of the water, making a turn, uh, jumping back in over some rails and then uh, jumping a duck in the middle of the water again going a little ways jumping up a bank out of the water and then and then having a distance to uh, a brush corner after that and and once you get once you get into that whole sequence you've got to be pretty much on your toes because it will come at you quick well, the Philip Duttons, Andrew Hoyes, and William Fox Pitts will know what it takes kind of coming around this corner to get it done. But for some of those newbies here, they might be a little bit surprised when they are used to dropping into water. It doesn't take as much guts as it will take here. Yeah, this is a big drop into water. This is as big as it gets. Uh, there'll be some broken hearts here. <laughs> You know, people are going to jump in well and they're not going to come out well because they lose their line, they lose their concentration, their horse loses its concentration, and the next thing you know, you've had a 20. After the head of the lake, they, uh, they have a, a nice, nice galloping fence, uh, the table, uh, which brings them back up towards the Normandy Bank, uh, where I think the Normandy Bank, again, I think last year they had to ride that quite well. I think they're going to have to do that as well this year. Uh, after the Normandy Bank, they have quite a long gallop down the hill to the infield water, uh, which, which again, uh, not being, uh, I think it's, I think it's a bit straightforward this year. But I think at this point in the course, it needs to almost be that way. And then uh, they have one jump after that before they come to where we are in right now. 
Well, in the past, we've certainly seen a lot of riders make it about to this point and then not cross those finish flags that they're aiming for over here at Rolex behind us. But this, another combination that will play a factor, 26 AB, the Smart Pack Horse Park shelters. And there's quite big ditches under these, Derek. I, I think that this is quite different from what, what it has been in the past couple of years and uh, this year we put these the horse park shelters over the ditches. I, I, as much as the ditches are there, I don't know that they're going to play, play a factor into this, um, but I think that the, the jumps are there, they're, they're decent sized jumps, but at the same time I think they're going to allow people to get through. I think that the, the big thing is the riders are going to have to still be, have to ride a line here and have to pay attention. They just can't come down here and just sort of think it's going to happen because at this point in the course usually the horses are a little bit tired and you definitely have to keep it together to make sure you finish well taking care of your horse here always a huge priority and for those riders who kind of haven't been as far around here they'll also probably be a little bit mentally exhausted if nothing else getting to this point i, I think that plays a factor here and the people that i walk with now i'm going to be reminding them look you jump the first one so that you can get at the second one you the, we pace it carefully we know how it's supposed to ride but it's up to the rider to make it ride that way it's been designed to ride very well but you have to ride very well to make it ride well. A long, tough course here in Kentucky. And Mr. Wofford, if you were setting out on this course at Rolex, what would your plan be? That I hope <laughs> I would be back here in about 11 minutes because there's a lot to do from the start here until now you jump the last few fences. I think Derek has very wisely built nice, huge, simple fences for the last four or five efforts because the horses really have to do a lot of jumping this year, a lot of straight routes, a lot of concentration, very possible with the right attitude and the right mental toughness. Well, Derek, plain and simple, what do you think it's going to take for riders to get it done here on Saturday? <laughs> I think that, one, they have to ride smart. You have to know your horse, and I think you have to know when to take, take advantage of the opportunities that, you, that you're given. All right, gentlemen, do you have any favorites within the field? Yes. <laughs> well, you'll have to check in with, with these guys here on course. Maybe they'll be willing to expose some of those later on. But nonetheless, it will be a fantastic day of spectating and for everyone here at the Horse Park on Saturday.